Tonight on Market Call, we have David Burroughs. He's president and chief investment strategist at Barometer Capital Management. And he's taking your questions on North American large caps. Hello and welcome to Market Call tonight. I'm Mark Bunting. Thanks a lot for joining us. David Burroughs is the guest and uh, there are three ways to reach us if you have a question for him. And there they are. Market Call at BNN.ca is the email address. Call us toll free at that number, 1-855-326-6266 or you can tweet us at Market Call. Hello, Mr. Burroughs. Very well, how are you? It's great, thanks. Last time you were here, uh, you said we were in a secular bull market, could last several years. I don't suppose your thoughts have changed much? No, I think, I think that uh, you know, we continue to get evidence that there's a very strong underlying demand for equity ownership underneath the surface. Every pullback we've had in the last 12 months has been relatively shallow and relatively short-lived. Not that there haven't been things to worry about, there have. Um, but clearly, I think there is under-ownership in equities. Uh, valuations are reasonable, especially against the backdrop of interest rates. Interest rates don't look like they are set to move dramatically anytime soon. Uh, and so the extra return you can get buying equities uh, versus yields in a 10-year bond, I think, are very attractive. And, you know, you have to find the right sectors and the right themes. But I think the market's very constructive. Expand on those, th those themes, David, that you've, uh, you've talked about before. Well, you know, ultimately, we know that private investors and pension funds under own equities as a percent of their total, uh, total values. Uh, and if you looked at it over a long period of time, at the bottom of secular bear markets, you tend to get down to 15 to 20 percent equity ownership as a percent of net worth, say, at the household level. Uh, in each of the last long-term 20-year secular bull markets, uh, by the end, uh, private investors were you know, close to 30% equity exposed. Today they're sitting somewhere 18, 19%. Uh, pension funds are underinvested. And, and when you look at the rate of return on a 10-year bond at say 2.8% and the earnings yield and the average stock in the S&P at 7%, that's a big premium you're getting paid to take the risk to own equities. And it's almost two standard deviations above what has been historically the norm. So you're getting paid well to take risk. You just have to find the right sectors and securities. Um, how important are uh, dividends uh, to your clients in, in the stocks you hold? Right. So we take care of private investors largely. And our clients are, are not trying to knock it out of the park. They're looking for consistency. A lot of the money that we run is yield focused, although our strategy is very much aimed at ri generating a rising stream of cash flows. So there's times when you want to focus in fixed income where you've got risk aversion, you're concerned about risk. I think that as it stands right now, we are mostly equity focused focused on dividends and specifically dividend growth. Companies where they're paying out relatively little of their earnings, but where they're showing a willingness to increase that. So the average company in the S&P 500 is paying about 33, 34% of their earnings out. Long run average is about 50. So they held back for many years on dividend increases. We're seeing that over the last two, three years. But dividend increases could go on for a long time before the companies got back to anywhere near what has been normal historically. And uh, lastly, what's the main obstacle, or are there several obstacles that concern you that could upset this apple cart that you portray here? I, I think that, that typically when you have uh, a bull market in developed markets, which is what we're seeing right now, it tends to happen when inflation is falling. Uh, and during that period of time, typically emerging markets underperform, which is, of course, what's been going on. Uh, the risk is that things slow down enough in emerging markets that they wind up with credit problems or their currencies come off enough. And you know, there have been some concerns because South American currencies have backed off and some Asian currencies have backed off. Uh, and you are seeing a marked slowdown in China. So I think that the biggest risk would be a credit crisis of some kind. Uh, certainly you're gonna see more disruption in Asia over the next while uh, because the credit markets, uh, uh, for especially the shadow banking uh, part of the market are not so good. Uh, but in general, this is disinflationary for developed markets. Consumer-led economies like the U.S., 72% of the economy is consumer. Uh, and so unless you get some kind of train wreck, which I just don't see, uh, probably the backdrop remains pretty positive. All right, very good, David. Uh, that is the overview from David Burroughs. He'll start uh, drilling down on your questions on stocks right after this.